crafters this is cassie aka the crafting chef bringing you another video on behalf of sub this and that monthly sublimation box for today's tutorial i'm actually not going to be sublimating but i want to talk about this neoprene lunch tote and utensil holder that was part of our july 2022 box this may be one of my favorite items in the box because it's just so stinking cute. Um, it comes in four colors, this teal color, pink, there's a blue one and a dark gray. This is an item that I thought was a little tricky to sublimate. So I just wanna talk about it quickly on today's video. Uh, so one, it's neoprene. It looks like this when you purchase it. So it's white on both sides. This is the gray one, by the way. Um, and the first thing you wanna do, it doesn't matter if you have a template. Guys, I used the same size template to do all the bags. And I wanna show you, because this definitely, I got these done by trial and error. So I wanna show you on this blue one, look how the bottom did not sublimate just this very bottom. And I was also short just right there at the top. Again, I use the exact same template to do all of the bags. So what I recommend first is measure, measure, measure every time. Have you ever heard of the saying measure? It goes something like measure twice and cut once as opposed to you measuring and cut, measuring and cut measuring and cut so you want to measure i mean it's material so it's like a shirt right you can have five shirts and that hem could be different on all five shirts so you have to measure every time um what i actually did was i took the bag and i scanned it on my scanner so i could get the shape of this design and i'll explain later why i did that um, so I thought my measurement was good. I was just going to use this, but no, use this as, take this as a lesson and measure this space every time. Now I'm going to talk about why I opted to do that as opposed to just making a rectangle. I knew right away when I saw these bags, especially on the light colored bags, that if I just did a square, it was possible that I was going to get the design on the size of the bag. That is exactly what happened here. So you see this pink here and the design extended on this side. I didn't mind it at the top, but my intent was really not to have the sides get the design. So that's why I opted out of doing a rectangle or square but after doing this so many times with the actual shape of the bag I decided to move to a square formation but I was trying to find my tape I have what I believe is a two inch roll of tape I can't find it a two inch roll of tape and I covered the size of the bag in heat tape. That was so if the design was going to press, it would at least be on the heat tape. Butcher paper, blowout paper, copy paper. I attempted to do it with that, but unless you layer that, it's still possible for your ink to seep through the paper. I mean, you see that already when you're actually sublimating, how the ink comes to the other side of the paper. So the heat tape worked, but I don't know if you can see, it's really light right here. It's, it almost discolored the bag. So you can see it just right here and then you see a different little light color here. So that was trial and error. I did take my lint roller and I just vigorously rolled over this so it to blend it in as much as I could. Here's a good, you can see it really well right here. 
to where that's light and the rest of this was dark. And all of this was covered. So I took it like this and then I covered this whole piece and just wrapped my heat tape around it like that. I still love the way this came out though. So I'm not, I'm not against that, but I'm pretty sure paper, which I did try, um, would work better. It's just that you have to layer the paper so your ink doesn't seep through to the bag. Um, let's see what else I learned when doing this. Oh, the one thing about neoprene, when you go to press it, when you press one side and you take this off of your heat press, the bag is puffed up. It's almost as if the heat just raised the bag up. So you'll open up your heat press and it'll be just up off the press like like this so I strongly recommend with your design that you for the front if you're gonna do a full bleed all these tips and things that I went through are to get a full bleed on the design so I suggest making sure that you take down your design that you have tape going wrapped around to the back of the bag so that you get this portion Especially because it's something about cooking that neoprene that just makes it rise up slightly. So you want to make sure that your design is tightly wrapped down here at the bottom. Let's talk about time and temperature. So I press these at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. For neoprene, I believe people generally do 385 degrees to 400. I decided to just start with 400. Didn't have an issue with the 400, nothing burnt, no scorch marks, and none of that. So I, I believe 400 is fine. So for the utensil holder, I did a heavy pressure. I did it for both sides. I tried one with a medium pressure, and the design did not sublimate well. It actually looks like, here's one of them. It actually looked like it had watermarks right here, right? And then you can see where the S is kind of light. So this was like a medium pressure. And the same thing with this one. Specifically, it was happening at the opening. And that's because your zipper is here. Your zipper here is at the top. So there's more, um, I don't know if I, I can't show the inside, but there's um like just more fabric, the, um, the part of the zipper that's sewed in. So you have more at the top than you do everywhere else. So that's why I was having that issue at the top. So I recommend heavy pressure, really just to make sure that your top near the zipper gets completely sublimated. For the tote bag, I did a medium pressure. The medium pressure seemed to be fine um, of course, I had to try a lot of tips and tricks, and so let's get to that. So the first thing I tried was, let me measure this so I can tell you how large it is. This is an 11 by 11 heat press pillow. So I put this inside the bag. Where this fold is, let me push these back. Where this fold is in the bag, you wanna make sure that your pillow is on the top. So as you can see here where the bag is folded in, you wanna put that on the bottom and your pressed pillow directly on top of that. Okay, so here is the object. If you see, let's see how I can show this. Me run my hands down here Let's see if I can go this way. You can see a dip, right? Which means there'll be a lighter pressure being pressed here than there is here, right? It's not an even pressure. You can see my fingers sliding down inward. The other thing is your press pillow, because this is a curved bottom, you can't get the press pillow all the way down to the bottom. There's, you feel no pillow here, right? This is just all bad. My pillow stops right under the letters here. So I pressed one just like this. I 
felt like I would be okay because the dip is just a slight dip. Um, but I wasn't using this pillow. I have another pillow and it's not, it's the same size, but it isn't as thick as this one. So I think I tried this one first, not really paying attention that there was a difference. And this is what happened. Right? Cause there was, there wasn't enough pressure. One side came out great, but the other side, not enough pressure. So I moved to this pillow. Hey, let's try this pillow. It get, It's a little thicker. And then here's the next thing I tried. I'm gonna move back a little. There we go. Parting the mess, guys. It's, it's, I did a vanity event last week, so everything is just kind of messy right now. This press pillow that I have is six by 15. So it is a skinny rectangle. See this fold, that's another, another thing I've tried. So I sat this pillow here, right? Gave me a little more room to work with. And let's see that back. Doing it this way caused me a little ghosting. There's the B, there's the T. This wouldn't have been so bad had all the letters slightly ghosted because it would have looked like just an offset. But because it was just the ends, I was like, nah, that's not going to work. Um, and that's because clamping down on the heat press, right? When you clamp down with, and you have the press pillows, you can hear the air just escaping to kind of just flatten it from your heat press. So that still left me with a bit of a dip. Not as bad as the first pillow, but just a bit of a dip. The third thing I tried, I took this pillow, folded it in half, slid it in here. This gave me a lot more pressure or a lot more, um, not pressure, but just that the bag was com was almost completely aligned. There's still a little dip, but it is very, very slight. Try to push it down further. And this pillow, the shorter pillow, I was able to get almost further down in the bag but I kind of left it up at the top so I could have just this even pressure. You can see the dip is very, very slight. So once I applied that medium pressure, it seemed to work great. But let's be honest, all sublimation is not created equal. Time and temperature depends on your heat press. It depends on the substrate. Um, your press pillow, I didn't even know until I had these pillows together. It never dawned on me, like, wow, this one was so much um, thicker than this one. Because it's, I never use them at the same time. I just grab one and I just go. Um, but now I know this one, this one, the covering is a little darker. So now I know. Um, but it is really trial and error. Um, I am very happy with how my final product came out. So I had a total of, I think seven bags and I got three, two that came out great. Um, one of them I have not sublimated on and I had three that did not turn out so great. So it's all trial and error. I hope that some of these suggestions help you as you to sublimate on these tote bags because these bags are just so stinking cute. It's time for students to go back to school. I mean, this makes bringing lunch way cuter. So just overall, to sum this up, time and temperature, 400 degrees, 60 seconds. I did a heavy pressure on the utensils, a medium to heavy pressure on the tote bags. Make sure your design goes all the way to the bottom. So if you have to make it slightly larger, hey, make it slightly larger and go over. 
Be careful if you don't want to sublimate the sides to try using layered butcher paper or heat tape to protect the sides of the bag so you don't have the design going over. It's not bad if you're going to do it. Just do it all the way. Um, uh, what else? And a press pillow. A press pillow is a must. If you're not going to sublimate the full area of the bag and you're just going to do the center of the bag, you probably will not have any issues as long as you sub above the fold. So if you sub up in here and that's all that you're going to do, no problem. You can just sub this normally. But if you want to try to achieve a full coverage image, press pillow, press pillow, press pillow. I cannot stress it enough. I used an 11 by 11 inch press pillow and I also used this 6 by 11 inch press pillow but folded in half just to get right in that center. So I hope this helps. If any of you watching have tips, if you've tried these bags and you have tips, please post them below and let's help each other out along our sublimation journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.